You're a great physician. And Father, we bless you. Father, I thank you tonight. I declare and decree, Lord, that those, if you need things to fall in line or fall in place, lift your hands. And Father, I declare and decree, Lord, that as we're in this fall season, that things will fall in place for your sons, that things will fall in place for your daughters in Jesus' name, that you go before your sons and daughters to make the crooked path straight and the rough places smooth in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, I want y'all to really put that in your spirit. That as we're in this fall season, yes. that as the seasons have changed, yes. that the things that are out of order in your life, that divine order will come yes. and that things yes. will fall in place. Yes. And I want you as a prophetic act, I want you to start speaking it out of your mouth. That's and right. Not while you're here, while you're home. Right. Oh, not while you're here, while you're going through your trials. Hallelujah. Not while you're here. It's easy to say here, but you Jesus, have to say it and Jesus, believe it. Jesus. So for whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive it and you shall have it. That's Glory right. to God. The word of God and prayer is for what you go through when you leave this place. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Right. It's for what you go through. It's for your trials. They're the scripture. There's something we can stand on in the word of God that will be there for us while, while ever, whatever it is that we're going through. We don't want to just be religious and say the church. And then while when the heat is on, we say negativity. Or we're saying the wrong right. thing. Or we're saying amen in church, but when, when we're under that trial, we're saying something totally opposite. That's religious behavior. We don't want to be religious. We want to stand on God's word, come hell or high water. We want to declare and decree and prophesy while we're under trial. While the pressure is on. The word of God works while the pressure is on. Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands. I feel the presence of the Lord. What about Sando Rabosia? What about Carola Bosso? Hallelujah. Father, we bless you. We bless you. We bless you. And just let this let Thanksgiving come from your mouth. Let Thanksgiving and praise flow out of your mouth tonight. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. Come on, you should be doing way better than that. Today. You should be releasing praise and thanksgiving for what God's about to do. You should be releasing praise and thanksgiving for the things that you're believing God for. You're not doing anything after you get it. But if you can praise Him before it manifests. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. We bless you. Hallelujah. We bless you. We bless you, Jesus. Lord, you are worthy. We bless you, we bless you, we bless you. Father, let your glory fill this place. Father, touch your sons and daughters that are watching live tonight, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, whatever they need tonight, we prophesy, Lord, that as they're in this fall season, that things will fall into place for them. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. What things soever you desire. When you pray, believe that you receive it and you shall have it. Come on, that's for somebody tonight. What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive it and you shall have it. In Jesus' name. I sense a wave of victory. I sense a wave of victory. I sense a wave of victory. Father, we thank you tonight for things falling in place for your sons, for things falling in divine alignment for your daughters, that these great people, the people of God, will walk in a season of answered prayer. But things soever you desire, Hallelujah. when you pray, believe that you receive it, and you shall have it. And if you receive that, come on, put those hands together again. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's, let's, let's stand to our feet and let's give God a, a Psalm 47 and one praise. 
947 wants to clap your hands all you people and shout with the now with the voice of change. How many shouts do I have to have? Hallelujah. Praise in my face. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You may be seated to press the Lord. So we can keep a nice flow going. Uh, you probably don't have your books from last week, but if you need one, uh, would y'all pass it out over here? We want everybody to have your 20 uh, life, 20 years of ministry uh, points. If you don't have it, uh, raise your hand. We'll get it to you. I have some printed up, so if you don't have it, bring it. If you have your booklets from, the, from last week, bring your booklets out. Amen. Well, good evening, everybody. Just good to be in the house of the Lord. We had a little few bumps in the road tonight, but we're here. God bless our Facebook family live tonight. And we just, I just felt led to, uh, let me wait till everybody gets situated. Amen. God bless you. We bless everyone that's watching. We honor you tonight. We bless you tonight. If you're watching this, please share, share, share this uh, <clears throat> service tonight. We will be back on tomorrow morning at 7.55 a.m. for our Sunday Facebook live service. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So once everybody's situated, Thank you, Jesus. That's your stuff. Good to see everybody out tonight. Amen. In the house of the Lord. And Amen. if you have a sheet, keep bringing it out. Bring it out this. Bring it out uh, for the month. Amen. Glory to God. <clears throat> Amen. Can we just give God a big old hand of praise? Amen. 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 All right. Glory to God. Well, Amen. Thank you, Lord. It's good to be here tonight. We just thank and praise God for the great and mighty things He's doing in all of our lives. Yes. Amen. Good to have everybody out tonight yeah. here. Good. To, I'm glad for those that are watching that you're on tonight as well. So, uh, what I, I just felt like I wanted to share wisdom. Somebody say wisdom. Wisdom. Yeah. Wisdom comes from life, life's experience. And somebody said, oh, I want to hear the words, man. I want, you're going to hear the word tonight. This is the word. <laughs> wisdom is the principal thing. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And I just felt like I wanted to share wisdom because many of you, most of you, well, all of you in here are leaders. Somebody say leaders. Leaders. And um, we go through things in life, Maria. We go through things in life, but just not for us, but we go through things in life that we can, it enables us and strengthens us that we can be better believers that we can be better mothers and fathers and grandfathers and grandmothers or just better people, better singles, better widows, better widowers, better better people of God. Amen? Amen. So I, I'm learning and I, I learn life lessons even with William. I, I, I learn things with him and I say it's always a lesson to be learned. One thing Pastor Faye taught me years ago, yeah. whatever, whenever we go through uh, things in life, it's a lesson for you, and it's a lesson for them. Right. Say, let's say it together. Say, it's a lesson for me, it's a lesson and, it's a lesson for me. and it's a lesson for them. And the them is whoever you go through, whatever you go through with. Now, you can make it a learning experience, and you can learn to pull your emotions together right. and say, when I would want to blow up and fuss and cuss and rage, I'm not going to do that. What is the lesson? Because the lesson is the wisdom, and the lesson is better. If you can get that lesson, if you can learn that lesson, I don't have any notes, so whatever I know is right, I don't press. If you can learn the lesson and pass the test, somebody needs to write it down. Learn the lesson and pass the test. And please take, please take notes, because I'm, I'm, some of this stuff, I'm not going to be, don't ask me what I said, because I ain't. Well, the well, Holy Spirit will bring all things back to my memory. So <laughs> just take notes if you need to. Amen? Amen? So that's the bigger picture. Let me tell you something. The bigger picture is not proving that you're right. Uh -huh. In marriage, yes. in relationships, yes. in friendships, yeah. on the job, whatever. The bigger, the big, see, a lot of times we feel like, oh, I know I was right. Uh -huh. But then you, you lost the person. You lost the friendship. You're in divorce court because you had to be right. You have to be right. right. What is the lesson? What is God teaching you? What is God teaching them? How is God trying to teach you to navigate together and to teach somebody something that may need to learn a lesson 
after you calm down. See what I'm saying? Yeah, totally. Because a lot of that's it, totally. Sometimes if you get caught up in the moment, you'll miss the message. Because something happened yesterday, I'm not going to go into it. But something happened yesterday, and I really want to. And then the Holy Spirit checked me and said, like, you know, calm down. Deal with it later. Teach this one a lesson. You learn a lesson. And then I was able to, to keep my big mouth closed. All right. I don't mind telling on myself. Okay. Because, you know, that's how we grow. We, by being transparent. Yeah. You know, I, I, I keep my mouth closed. And then today I'm able to have a teachable moment yeah. right. and share. Amen. So it's not so much that we have to be right, it's that we can share even with the younger generation and we can share and we can help and we can get it and they can get it. Amen. Amen. It's not so much what you say, how? it's how you say it. Yeah. That is for real. Amen. Real. And that's wisdom. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. I love you, Walter. I really feel good. I feel really good in here. That's I said, good. we must go have a good time. And I got in and <laughs> looking at my key ring, no keys to get out. So we're going to have a good time tonight. But I just, we're going to, sh- I'm going to teach this, but I'm going to release it. Then I'm going to turn on my light, up the lights, and then share from last week's Saturday's uh, celebration, which was so epic. Amen. Those who were there, it was just an epic night. So we're going to talk about that and we'll be out of here. So anyway, so I'm going to go to my 20 years in ministry, uh, life lessons. Um, I do want to say about the celebration last week is that it was really, it was really, it was just so epic. But we'll, I want to hear, we'll all talk about it. But what I really gleaned from it, the most that I gleaned from it, was to really continue to empower God's people. That's right. Amen. Because it's so, it's, you know, it's, it's nice. It's nice to hear it. It's nice to hear the, the difference that I make in other people's lives and the difference that the ministry makes in other people's lives. But I want y'all to know that I know it, it, it's not all about Pastor Mark. Uh-huh. The thing is that to continue to empower all of you in here so you can continue to make the, the lasting impact that I make on others, that is for you to make the same impact. Yeah. It's for you to do the same thing. As, as Pastor Bailey says, it's to do what it is that God's called you to do. So I re- it was good to hear the compliments. It was good to hear that. And that it doesn't, I'm not comfortable with that. I'm not ready to retire with that. I'm ready to say, you know what, I got to press in the more to reach more people, to make a greater impact, and to make sure I do what I'm called to do in this generation to fuel you all, to motivate you all, to love you all, so you can continue to make a difference in people's lives. That's all it is, it's just making a difference in people's lives. Amen. Walking in love, showing love, uh, helping other people, being considerate. So. That's what it, that's the overall of what it did for me last week. I said I got to continue to fuel the people of God mm-hmm. and to pack this house, not to pack it to say we got X amount of people, but to pack it, whether it's pack it through Facebook Live, right. to pack it in the building, to pack it if God opens other doors, right. to, 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 to motivate you. And one thing I say, people and ministers and leaders, they like crowds, but they don't love the people. We don't need leaders that like crowds. We need leaders like Jesus that love the people. That love the people. Right there. Amen. That's yeah. key point right there. Yeah. Oh, I can't, I can't, I can't preach tonight. I can't, pro- I can't prophesy tonight because every every seat is not full. That's the wrong motive. Amen. Oh, my gift, I guess my gift ain't gonna work since it, since it ain't crowded. All no, a true leader can prophesy to five five hundred or five thousand. Right, right. Amen. Because you do it as unto the Lord. Let's give God a hand of praise. So I just want y'all to know I love you all. I appreciate you all. I appreciate all that you do for me uh, year round. I appreciate all that you did last weekend and all that you will continue to do. I, I just love you all. And my, my, I'm so encouraged to keep doing what God has called me to do at the young age of 57. That's good. Amen. You know, I really, I really want to continue to really press in. That's my goal to press in. I said, Lord, keep me healthy, keep me strong so I can continue to do what you've called me to do. Amen. Not so I can be all over Hawaii with my feet up. Oh, that's not bad either. But you know, take a few God's people. Amen. So let's go into the wisdom. I don't know how many I'm going to share tonight, but I just want to just minister from my heart and to share wisdom. Father, as we come tonight, we thank you for this gathering. We thank you for your sons that are here in person and those that are watching virtually, Father. And I pray that as I share my wisdom, as I share my life experience with the people of God, that it will ignite them and encourage them and motivate them to continue to do what you've called them to do. Lord, sometimes you cry 
Sometimes you're discouraged. Sometimes you get weary. Sometimes you don't know what to do. But Lord, I thank you, Father God, that as we learn to hold to your unchanging hand, Father God, that you always are with us, that you never leave us nor forsake us. So Father God, I thank you. I honor these great people that are here tonight under the sound of my voice, Lord. I thank you that you place so much greatness on the inside of them, Father. And I pray that you would ignite them, that you would encourage them to finish their course, Lord, in Jesus' name. That they, they will not walk in fear, for you have not given them the spirit of fear, but that of power, love, and of a sound mind. And that everyone is so intricate in their own place, Father God, in their own sphere of influence, Father God. You've placed so much on the inside of them. So, Father God, I pray that this night will be a night of encouragement, Hallelujah. that they will be encouraged and sparked to even do more, not for a church, yeah. not for a denomination, not for a movement, not to be seen or not seen, but they will do all that you've called them to do to advance the kingdom of God globally, Hallelujah. to advance the kingdom of God all around the world, Father God, that people would know and be saved, Father God, because of their life, Father God, use them. For your glory, let no flesh glory in your sight. And Father God, we pray tonight that they will be ignited and encouraged to do what they're supposed to do here on earth. In Jesus' name, Jesus amen. amen. If you receive that, give God a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, so uh, God bless our visitors in the back. Let my sister in the back. God bless them. Amen. We, we make sure we give them some uh, little uh, uh, 20 points. Okay, let's go. So I'm going to share 20 years of ministry. Number one, y'all got everybody got your papers? Yes. All right. Number one, it says, do not compete with other ministers or ministries. Do not compete with other ministers or ministries. You have to know that as a minister of the gospel, as a, even, even if you don't have a title, you, we're all ministers. Amen. Yes. We're all lights in the yes. earth. So you don't have to try to be like nobody else. Right. You don't have to have no, God has given you your own individuality. That's He's right. given you your own spin on the kingdom of God, whatever that is. It may be just behind the scenes. It may just be doing things behind the scenes. That maybe it's not public like mine, but whatever it is, maybe it's praying behind the scenes, interceding behind the scenes. And I'm going to tell you, one of the greatest, one of the greatest ministries to have, yeah. especially from the pandemic and just, yeah. just overall, what makes it possible, what even advanced for my ministry, is the phone ministry. Yeah. And when I say phone ministry, I'm saying calling people. Right. Checking on people. That is so right. Texting people. Yeah. Praying with people over the phone. Right. You can have a worldwide ministry and never leave your home. That is so good. So true. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. We learned that from the pandemic. We could all right. get to the building. People were being blessed all around the world through Facebook Live. Through YouTube, through all of uh, social media. What's the other one I always forget? Zoom. Through Zoom. There's so many avenues. So I want to encourage you, don't compete with other ministers. Don't compete with other ministries. We don't do what other people do. Oh, well, I'm going to do this because this church is doing that. You might not be called to do that as a minister. Right. Come on. Amen. Talk Listen. Right That's good. So you do what God has called That's and good. commissioned you to do. Amen? Amen. So do not compete with other ministers or men. keep your own uniqueness. Yeah. A lot of you, a, a lot of you in here have prayer ministries. You see what how God wants to lead your prayer ministry. You see how God wants to lead your 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 teaching ministry. You know whatever you see, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit has so many ideas, so much creativity. A lot most of you in here have your own speak the truth and love. Intercessors prayer ministry, ministry, global compass prayer ministry. So I want to encourage you, never try to be like anybody else. Amen. But always see what you can do to advance the kingdom of God. Amen. Always see what you can do to reach more people. That's good. That's good. Amen. Talk right back. All, see what you can do to reach new people. Right. Amen. Uh -huh. oh, I don't care who's doing what. Make sure. And we should be in other ministries. Inspire us. Other ministers encourage us, yes. but you want to be what God wants, because there's somebody that you encourage. Yes. There's someone that's inspired by you, just like people are inspired by me. And when I look at it, I'm like, wow, I've been preaching since I was 18. I preached my first message at 18, so next year I really will be celebrating 40 years in the preaching ministry and just 20 years in this ministry, but I've been in ministry longer than 20 years. 
Amen. This is just New Jersey ministry. But I'm saying that to say that you make a difference. I have a message I haven't taught it yet. I'm going to give you a little hint. But I want to teach on, I'm going to teach on a message, go mad. Go mad, uh -huh. M-A-D. Yep. Don't go mad and be angry. Go make a difference. That's yes, right. That's Amen. Fantastic. Isn't that good? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's really good. Go mad. Go mad. And that's what I want to encourage you. Yeah. Go mad. Go yeah. make a difference. Amen. That's what we're all called to do. Yeah. That's right. And whatever your ministry is, make sure that your ministry is based, write this down if you don't, if you're taking those, based in love. Yeah. 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 Right. That's good. Love is what draws people. Make sure it's based in love. Make sure your ministry can reach all races of people, Amen. all walks of life of people. Center your ministry not that it just reaches one. You, with God's call, I always tell people I'm a black pastor, but I'm called to the world. Amen. I'm not called just to a black church. I'm called to every race, every creed, every nation. And I love God's people, every race, every creed, every nation. Amen. And we'll hug them and pray with them and. Talk to them and text them and make them laugh. You know, all because we should love people. God loves people. God love people. You Amen. can't love crowds and not love people. Because let me tell you something, people are going to feel it and they're going to know it. That's right. Amen. 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 So do not compete with other ministers or ministries. And we've been in churches where we've seen people compete. Oh, they got a TV ministry. Well, we're going we to get us a TV ministry. And then you don't stay on for two weeks. <laughs> Because you can't do that. Mm -hmm. If something encourages you, ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, should we go into that? Holy Spirit, should yeah. we do this? Yeah. Is that for us to do? Don't don't walk in the flesh. Because what God orders, He pays for. Uh -huh. Where God guides, He provides. And what God orders, He pays for. If God didn't order you to go on TV, He ain't required to help you pay for it. <laughs> As I say on my Facebook Live, let me take, take a drink a to that. Take amen. Amen. <laughs> Let's give God a hand of praise. Amen. 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 Number two. I'm gonna when I finish, I'm gonna open up for question and answer too, if y'all have any questions. Uh, so get the other mic ready for Minister Steph, Minister Will. She can take go around. No, for Pastor Ben. Uh, let her go around and ask questions. Amen. So number two. Number two is stay focused on what God has called you to do. Uh -huh. Everybody say focus. Focus. We're living in a time where there's mucho distracto. Focus. There's a lot of distractions. Focus. And one thing I even learned more so today is that we know that our phones is like our biggest distraction, if we be honest. How many people guys say our phones are like our biggest distraction? Yeah. So this morning I was up and I was doing some things and I didn't go to work last night. And I was like, wow, I got so much time, but I hadn't got on the phone. It's like as soon as I got on the phone, as soon as I started talking to this one, and it wasn't bad, it was a lesson. As soon as I started talking to this one, started talking to that one, and I was looking, the time just was gone. Yeah. yeah. Amen. 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 Because talking on the phone, yeah. it takes your time. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So we don't, it, it, it takes your time. So sometimes if you have something to do, sometimes you might not want to pick up the phone or get on the phone. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I'm just saying, because before I knew it, that time was going by like this. So stay you got to stay focused. Everybody say focus. 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 You have to stay focused on what God's called you to do. You have to make that the number one main thing. And when you make it the main thing, I'm not saying that the devil's, you know, things are not going to come or the devil's going to say, oh, well, just don't attack her this week because she got to make the ministry the main thing. Or he got to make it. No, you got to override some stuff. You're talking right. Mm -hmm. Because you're making, you're doing what God's called to do. You're making that the main thing. But then you got family stuff. That's right. That's right. Yep. Yeah. You got wife stuff. Those of you married. You got husband stuff. Some of you married. You got children stuff that have children. You got grandchildren stuff. Then you got your stuff. Work stuff. Uh -huh. Business stuff. So it's a lot of stuff to juggle. Say juggle. Juggle. Yep. Sometimes we feel like we're a clown in ministry because we juggle so much. <laughs> Just don't look like one. <laughs> Just don't want to look like one, but yeah. So I'm not saying when you say yes to God, it's not gonna be it's not gonna be so easy. Right. Yeah. It's not that I don't have things to come up in my life. 
But I choose to make ministry priority. Amen. I choose to make ministry my number one. I thank God for my job, my job. I love my job. My job gives us a lot of time and I work yeah. nights, so if I need to study or whatever, I love it. But you have to come to a place where you make, in spite of how you feel, yeah. in spite of opposition, yeah. Yeah. In, spite of, yeah. in spite of people not liking you, yeah. talking about you, yeah. gossiping about, whatever the case may be. So I, I didn't get to 20 years in ministry because you don't go through. Right. I didn't get to 20 years in ministry because people don't have their opinions. Right. True that. True that. You got you to gotta work through. Jesus. Even those of you, how many years you've been married, Minister Steph? 24. 24 years. How many years you've been married, Michael Murphy? 39. 39. How many years you've been married, Pastor Mark? 31. 31. Okay, all my married people in here that have been married a long time, you didn't get to 39 years and 24 years and 31 years just by everything being wonderful. Pastor Bev, she got some years in too. It's challenging. It's rough. I'm single. It's rough dealing with me. So I, <laughs> I made somebody laugh last week. I was telling them, I said it years ago. Uh, I said it years ago at a service I spoke at. And they were talking about the five love languages. And I was telling one of my friends last week, I said, I said, I told him years ago, I said, I know why I ain't married. I said, because I feel like I need all the love language. I said, it's probably too much for somebody. They bust my legs. I never heard nobody say that. I'm like, I think I need all of them. That's a, that's a, that's a lot for somebody to deal with all of them. Amen. Give God a hand of praise. So I'm saying that for 39 years of marriage and 20, 31 years of marriage, 20, how many pastors have you got it? 29 years. That's a lot. That's a long time. That's a lot of humble pie eating. That's a lot. Some of you that have been in relationships or marriages, maybe not as long. It's a lot. Deal. It's a look. Look. I'm, I'm. I'm smart enough to know I'm a lot to deal with by myself. So I can imagine. You know what I'm saying? You just. I'm saying it, but you know. Dealing with somebody else is a lot. Their stuff, their moves, their way they see it. You just got, you got, so. I'm just saying it's a lot that can keep us distracted. Right. Amen. And so when you choose to say yes to God for 20 years of ministry, it's not because it came so easy. It's not because you haven't hurt. It's not because you haven't cried. It's not because you haven't, but when you love God and you stick with God, it pays yeah. off. You have to make sure that whatever you yeah. do, like the verses, the Bible says, whatever you do in word or in deed, mm. do it heartily as unto the church. The Lord. Yes, right. Whatever you do in word or deed, do heartily as unto the denomination that you're in. To the Lord. Whatever you do in word or deed, do heartily as unto the mother's board. To the Lord. Whatever you do in word or deed, do it heartily as unto the ministers. <laughs> to the Lord. Whatever you do in word and deed, do it heartily as unto the missionaries and evangelists. Unto the Lord. The executive board. Unto the Lord. Whatever you do in word or in deed, do it heartily as unto the Lord. If you sow and give, do it heartily as unto the Lord. If you pray for somebody, do it heartily as unto the Lord. If you sacrifice, you have to do it as unto the Lord. Amen. If you do it, if you do it to get a pat on the back, or you do it. Do something for them to, because let me tell you, sometimes you may sow into people's lives and they may not be able to do anything for you. Yeah, right. Right. But let me tell you something, if you do it unto the Lord, God will always repay you. God will always take care of you. If you bless somebody, don't look for your blessing to come back from them. Well, I bless you and you bless me. No, it may not come from them. That's, right. That's why even in my years of, of, all my years of teaching and preaching, people say, well, Pastor Mark, what's your honorarium? I don't have an honorarium. Mm. Oh, I don't know about that. I don't know if I should, you know, not. I like, look, if I come and minister unto the Lord, suppose, suppose a ministry wants me to come. Honestly speaking, you don't hear a lot of people say this. Suppose a ministry wants me to come, and in their budget, they do not have it. They honestly really do not have it. Do I say, well, I'm sorry, but call me when you get it? <laughs> I got to get up now. <laughs> Everybody's not Pastor Mark. That's right. <laughs> Do I say, uh, this is my honorarium, and you know, well, if you can't meet it, save up, 
And when you need it, call me. That's me. See, he's just talking about himself. And I'm not saying that people that have honorarium is bad. I got to speak for me and my heart. Have you been to churches and work hard and maybe not got as much? Yes. Maybe got nothing yet. But you have to do this unto the Lord because it could be a test. Uh-huh. I'm talking right now. And most times, like I always want to teach you, it's a test for you and a test for them. Yeah. And I believe by the Spirit of God, God doesn't want us to be hirelings. No. Yeah. 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 Come on. Right, Pastor. Yeah. Wow. This church can't afford to pay me anything, but this church can charge, they can pay me 5000 so... I'm going to tell them, no, I'm going to 5000 because I need that $5,000. No, you have to go if they don't have anything. I say, I'm coming as unto the Lord. I'm going to come and sow and give and be a blessing because it could be a test. They may be testing you and say, they may be testing you and say, we, we were considering you as to come to be the pastor. We pay you top dollar and we did have it, but we're testing your motives. And you could miss out on a blessing. Because you're selfish or whatever. You have to do it as unto the Lord. And let, let, let the Lord take care of you. Amen. Not money. Don't let money rule you. Right, right, right. Don't be a hireling. Right. That was one of my things. That, not all musicians. That's my thing with a lot of musicians I've seen in the church in my history. Yep, yep. The musicians make it more than the pastor. They're like, what is this? Yeah. And they don't want to hit a note on an organ or the keyboard unless they got their money right. You know, you got their check. Thank God for Mr. With give Mr. Will hand praise. Yeah. All right, so I'm just uh there's a lot of things that can distract us. Right. In ministry or in church, if you don't see the people you want, that can distract you. If you don't see the growth in your little timetable, that can distract you. Amen. Those of you that have prayer ministers, you might not see as many people liking or sharing it. No, you gotta you gotta keep praying. If that prayer just touches one person, that's good enough. Right, amen. I, had a lady, I had a girl text me last week. It's in my phone. I got the receipts. I can't look at it because we're being recorded. But anyway, she texted me last week, and she was a friend of a friend that used to go here. And she said, Pastor Mark, I just wanted to encourage you. She said, I, and I hadn't heard from her in a minute. She said, I, was, I watched a snippet of you. I was scrolling through. And I went to YouTube and I saw a snippet of you encouraging people to pray. And I watched that snippet and she said, it encouraged me so much. She lives out of state. She said, it encouraged me so much. I decided I want to be a person of prayer. Praise the Lord. And she said, I made up my mind. I'm going to start praying that night. And she said, without a shadow of a doubt, she said, that between the next day, she said, I saw things happen. And she said, I received a miracle just from that time. So you never know. Thank so you, when, when you're on social media or you're on YouTube and stuff, people watch you or God will let them see a snippet of you just to change your life in that quick instant. Mm -hmm. And I got the receipts in my phone. When we finish, I'll share it with y'all. Yeah, just that, that, she said, just keep doing what you're doing. She said, just that little bit, that, that blessing of the life. You never know when you're making a difference. Even you that are on the prayer line. Amen. People may never even speak up. They may not even say nothing. Amen. But you're making a difference That's in so their true. life. Amen. No prayers go unheard of. No Amen. prayers go unanswered. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Let's give God a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Another thing that I'm gonna say this that uh, before we go to number three, another thing that can that can keep you that can distract you and not keep you focused on what God has called you to do is the spirit of this, of uh, discouragement. Mm -hmm. Yes. A lot of times you have to fight discouragement. Whatever you do, you have to fight yes. discouragement because the enemy is oh, you only got two views. What you praying for, Middle Square? You up there got your own blonde hair on set and everything looking good on Wednesday Night Live and you, you only two people views you. Yes, amen. That's talking right. <laughs> she said sometimes not. Yeah, but it's somebody somebody gonna watch it. Amen. So I want to encourage you. Don't be looking at numbers because it's a test. I'm telling you it's a test. He says if you be faithful in the little, I will make you ruler or lord over much. But most times we fail in the little, because none of us like little. We want, as Pastor Faith's grandson used to say, he want a yacht. I mean, he wants a lot. And I get it. We all do. I would love. I mean, look at a nice little crowd out tonight. Give God, I'm, I'm, I'm glad y'all are here. Yeah, I'm, I'm grateful. 
Because it comes a place in ministry when you rest in ministry and you settle in ministry and you don't get all worked up and you say, you know what, God, whoever you sit, whoever you sit tonight, I'm going to teach them. That's it. Whoever you, I got a nice class tonight. Look at my, look around, see my class. My class looking good tonight. Amen. Amen. So I'm saying, you know the classes. So you teach the students in your class. You love on the students in your class. You don't say, well, everybody ain't here tonight, so I, 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 no, I'll maybe teach next week when it's crowded. No! <laughs> you empower your students. That's good. Talk Amen. Let's give God a hand of praise. So stay focused. If you've got a prayer ministry, stay focused. If you love the seniors and you work with the seniors, stay focused. If you work with the kids, stay focused. If God's given you a prison ministry, stay focused. If you have a card ministry, a card ministry, people just love to send cards and yep. encourage them to send cards. If you have a texting ministry, keep sending your texts. Yep. Everything is not preaching and teaching. If you right got a, I'm telling you, I'm going to encourage y'all. Right. That phone ministry Talking is powerful. Right. Yeah. Amen. Call people. Check on people. Even if you say, look, I only got five minutes, but I just want to call you. Let me pray over you. That's right. Let me release a prayer. Right. Prayer goes a long way. Yes. I just want to see how, see how you're feeling. Let me say a prayer for you, Father. You know, just release a prayer. Right. That goes a long way. You don't know what people might need just in that split second that you call them. When the Holy Spirit, as much as you can, when the Holy Spirit puts somebody on your heart, call them. Don't wait till you go to shop, right? Talking right past them. Don't wait till you go to the laundromat. Yeah. Don't wait till you come through Wegmans. Don't wait till you go to your shoe store. Talking Don't wait till you go spend two hours in Dollar Tree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me take a drink to that. <laughs> then by the time you go home, you're trying. No, call them. Check on them. Check them. Pray for them. Amen. So number two is stay focused on what God has called you to do. In the kingdom of God, there's no big jobs or little jobs. If your job is to come in and turn on lights and make sure the church is organized or clean, that's unto the Lord. Amen. Yeah. If your if your job is praying for the service or praying on the prayer line. There's no big, my job is not better because I help hold the mic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's just my assignment. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Let's give God a hand of praise. Amen. Amen. Number three, this is a good one. Don't be distracted when people leave. Oh, Lord. Don't be distracted or discouraged when people leave your ministry. Some people pass away. Yeah. Yeah. Some people, God moves them on to other ministries. Some people leave on their own and go to other ministries. But your job is to pray for them and love them and bless them and keep it moving. And if you love them real good, they'll come back and see you. That's right. Don't be stank because they left. Right. I can't right. believe they left. You remember I did this? I did that. Because you know what? At the end of the day, everybody belongs to God. Good. You're free to worship. You're free to go where you go. You're free to do whatever you got to do. They belong to God. And keep your heart clean and pure. Uh -huh. Keep your heart clean and pure. Don't get emotionally tied to people. I know it's hard sometimes. Don't get emotionally tied to people. Because when you get emotionally tied, it, it makes it harder. And we get close to people. Yeah, we do. But don't be discouraged. Don't be stank because they left. Don't give them attitude. Don't see them in the grocery store and go to, go to the other aisle. Don't be distracted. You never know what God is dealing with someone else. Because all of us had to leave somewhere to be where we at tonight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we all had to. I had to leave where I was at so I could fulfill the call of God upon my life. So if you're, I just pray when people leave that they're leaving to better and they're leaving to fulfill what God has called them to do. Right, amen. It doesn't mean that the ministry is when I say better, I don't mean better as in size or better in number, but taking you better into your purpose and destiny, taking you better into what God has called you to do. Yeah. That's what I mean better. I'm not yeah. saying, I don't mean number-wise. Yeah. 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 But, it, but don't go somewhere and then you were doing something, now you're going somewhere else and now you ain't doing nothing. Stuff. Stuff, yeah. 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 Right. Don't, sit on, don't sit on a pew for 40 years. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. No, 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 no. God always wants... He wants his people. How many people have children in here? Raise your hands if you have children. Raise your hands if you got grandchildren. Raise your hands if you know children, if you love children. Amen. Yes. You want your children to advance. Amen. Totally. You want them to do better. If you're a good, let me.
me put this in the atmosphere. If you're a good, wholesome parent, yes. if you're a good, wholesome grandparent, or a good, wholesome person, you want the kids in your life, your kids that you that 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 are under your care, you want them to do better. Amen. How much more does God want his children yes. to do better? That's right. Amen. He said he would give you pastors and shepherds after his own heart. Thank you, Lord. I was sharing with William today, as we were talking, I said, when people, this is so good, write this down. I said, when people truly love you, they will tell you the truth. <laughs> now I see something in your nose, and be like, oh, I ain't going to tell them something in your nose. I'm just, I ain't going to tell I want, I want, I want to hurt their feelings. When pe let's say this together. Say when people, when when people, people truly love you, truly they, love you. They, tell you the truth. they tell you the truth. And they tell you the truth in love. Amen. They tell you the truth in love. Amen. Amen. So don't be distracted when people leave. It, that's how the world goes. People come, people go, people whatever, whatever. People love me one day. Yeah. You do it as much as don't Don't be distracted. You want people to leave your life. You ask God to, because let me tell you something, the only person that promised they would never leave you nor forsake you was God. Amen. <laughs> That's it. Amen. 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 Your boo, say, all right, man, you bet, you the, you my cream in my coffee. The devil is a lie. They got cream and coffee both gone. <laughs> mm -hmm. People will love you for a season. People will love you for a reason. People may have a motive, an agenda. Amen. Amen. But don't be distracted. You want people to leave your life. I was reading something. It says if someone left your life, mm -hmm. and Esther was saying, that means that God, one thing Pastor Faye said, she said if God, if someone leaves your life, they were only supposed to go with you that far. Yeah. That, that's really good. But in essence, they were saying, if, if a person leaves your life, whether it's a relationship or whatever, that person, they're not, they weren't for your future. They're not they're not going where you're going. You, it's okay. Even though you're like, oh, they my best friend or whatever. And sometimes, sometimes we can't see. Let me say that again. Sometimes we can't see. Sometimes we think someone is for us or we think someone has our back. You know, oh, we think. But then when you step back, sometimes when you're in something, you can't see. That's right. Let me say that again. Sometimes when you're, most times when you're in something, you can't see. So what you got to do is you got to step back away from you. Like, oh, I once was blind, but now I see. They liked me as long as I was picking up the check at the restaurant. They liked me as long as I was picking them up and showing them around all day. You know what I'm saying? So people have different motives and people have different things. So sometimes we have to see. Say see. see. Let's give God a hand of praise. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Number four, this is so good, in ministry and in your life, you have to allow God to fill you with his unconditional love. That's what God's agape is, unconditional love. I love you when you don't like me. I love you when you leave me. I love you. And, and I'm not saying that it all happens instantly. But most times you got to grow into it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yes. First you might be mad as heck. <laughs> Like, I'm mm, pass them on to my love with uncle different love. I don't love him right now. But God will never ask you to do something and then not give you the strength and ability to do it. Right. So some things have to and, and loving someone under this doesn't mean I love you, let's go to lunch, let's go to dinner. It just means I'm not holding nothing in my heart. Yeah. That's the main thing. You want to keep your heart pure, your motives pure. Yeah. You don't want no hiccup. And you you know, I'm gonna tell you this, I said it before. You know how you can tell if something's in your heart? Some, some of y'all have took this test. How can you say, oh, tell her I forgive him. Oh, I forgive him. I forgive him. I forgive him. I forgive him. All while you're in tongues and dancing in the street. You just forgive him. You're so full of love. And you're just dancing your heels off your shoes. Or dancing like Minister Claire and Sabrina was dancing Saturday night. Tearing up the floor. You, the, how, the real test of how you know if you forgive someone is what comes up in your heart when you see them. Well, case in point, give me an example, Pastor Mark. I don't mind if I do. <laughs> Say you broke up with somebody. Say you broke up with somebody, and this person really 
if he or she had your heart. But now, you moved on, you said, well, I forgive him. I don't want him to tell him. I want him back. I'm glad the Lord took him. Let him go on with Let him go on. He, she can have him. He can have him. But then, say then. Amen. Then you walk in the mall and you see them all hugged up with another boo. And they looking good and they all together. And you be like, no, he I'm not married. Y'all quiet. I don't know where y'all quiet because y'all know this. You stop by. You oh good. Give me that cell phone. I'm feeling like a little demonstration. You stop by the mall. You said, wait a minute. Call my girlfriend. You got it. Y'all see all that on the child? You busy? I'm in the mall. You ain't never gonna guess who I see in the mall. <laughs> <laughs> if it's one of your good girl girls, she's like, girl who? <laughs> Johnny, he got that girl to be hooked up with Clarifa. <laughs> you like, what? <laughs> you ain't forgive him. <laughs> A lot, let me tell you something. Good lesson. A lot of times we think we forgive because we don't see the person. Out of sight. But what about if you see them and he or she that you used to be with got the nerve to be kind of looking a little better? I'm keeping it real, y'all. You know, you know, now, you know now, now, I'm going to keep it real. Now, if he's looking a little better, and got himself together, you're gonna feel some type of now if he broke down. <laughs> I'm keeping it real. This is real wisdom. This ain't no play wisdom. This is real stuff. Right. Now, if he broke down, you are right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. right you strut through the mall, you got your blonde head heels on. <laughs> and he's sitting broken down looking like he's homeless. <laughs> and then you come and touch him. You come up there with the blonde hair, I use Mr. Lance, and she got the blonde hair tonight. So you be like, hey, you look at me like, Claire, that's you? <laughs> that's <a prophet. laughs> I'm following the prophet. You look at me, Claire, is that you? Man, you look at, you know, now y'all, you are gone, now they don't move no. You like, you looking good. You got blonde hair to your shoulders and bling bling. Got your legs out looking good. You know what I'm saying? So we okay. I ain't trying to be in nobody's business. Like no, so, so I'm saying, we okay. Yes. That's the real test of forgiveness. If you see the person and they look good or doing good, yes. can you still, in your heart, make sure you forgive them? Mm -hmm. If they broke down, we'd be glad to go home and say, child, I see what you do. I, 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 I felt sorry. You know, he, he looked pitiful. That's what we like to say. <laughs> pray for him, child. Put him on your prayer list. I can't pray for him. <laughs> Put him on your prayer list because he looked pitiful. <laughs> And have the nerve to talk about, do you think we can have a chance? No, we can't have no chance. Chance for nothing. You've got to have a praise. This is real stuff. This is real stuff. This is real issues. This is real wisdom. I ain't giving y'all no stuff I read out of a book. So I'm telling you, in life, these are all the challenges and stuff we have to go through. And we, that's one thing I tell you. One thing about me. I tell y'all the truth. Right. And one thing about me, I always strive to make sure my heart is right. Yep. Yep. We can look good. Yeah. We can have collars on. We can have collars and robes down, sweeping the floor. Big old white clergy collar and robes and chains around us, bishops' collars and all that kind of stuff. Uh -huh. And still have a whole bunch of hell and mess. That's right. Yep. That's right. That's true. We can look religious. We can have on our black and white. Right. Women can have dresses to their ankles. Mm -hmm. No, it's not about that. It's, it's, it's my heart right. It's my heart motive. And the good thing is, if you keep it real with God, he, he, He'll heal your heart and He'll take it out your That's He'll right. take Him and her. Because let me tell you something. When you've been with somebody a long time, there are things, there are soul ties. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And you got to pray and say, God, I've been there. you got to pray. you got to ask. I'm telling y'all. Even if you weren't married to a person. You have to pray and ask God. This, these are harder to break than even physical soul ties. Emotional soul ties are very, very, 
very hard to break. I'm, this is not my notes. You can get over physical. If someone hit you, something happened. None of y'all took too much. Y'all ain't here. Ain't gonna nobody hit y'all because y'all be on pick up something and kill somebody. And these, all these strong women's up in here <laughs> and watching my Facebook. But what I'm saying is, it's the emotional for men and for women. And men show it different. Men, when they're emotionally soul tied, they ain't gonna go back and forth. They just start to kill it. It's the truth. Because men, most men don't know how to deal with their emotions. So they take it out. They be like, well, shoot, if I can't have it, ain't nobody going to have it. And we see it on the news. Yeah, yeah, right. Right. Yeah. Women will go through, they'll move, they'll, you know, they'll try to, yeah. men, men, if they don't deal with their soulless yeah. ramp, they will, they will hurt somebody, yeah. for real. Yeah. Yeah. We've seen it happen. Yeah. They'll kill the new husband, they kill the new boyfriend, they kill the wife. Yeah. They'll be, and then they'll tell you, if I can't have, because they can't deal with it. So what we have to deal with, we have to deal with emotional soul ties. Say emotional soul ties. Emotional soul ties. When you love somebody in your heart and they get all in your heart and they get in and they get in and they win you over and then they leave you for whatever the reason, you have to stay before the Lord and sometimes for years, stay before the Lord or stay before uh, Minister Ruth is here tonight, stay before someone that can counsel you and get you out of it. But emotional soul ties, when you love someone and you love them with all of your heart, your soul, your being, it's very, very hard to move on. Especially if someone cheated on you or betrayed you or whatever it be. So you have to ask God, you got to daily pray. And that's why, that, that's why I used to deal with depression because of soul ties. There's so much stuff, you know, but when you stay before the Lord and yes, God to heal you, the Bible says he heals the broken heart and binds up their wounds. You got to, I'm telling y'all about the Spirit of God, you got to stay before the Lord. You gotta stay under the anointing because it's the anointing that will destroy that yoke of that emotional soul tie. Mm -hmm. Amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen. Amen. That's good. If you don't deal with that emotional soul tie, it'll be hard for you to move on. You won't want to. You won't want to deal with another man. Another. You won't want to deal with nobody because you're so. You've given yourself so much. So you got to ask God daily, and, and if you need counseling, get counseling. But you got to. But I, I can tell you from experience, if you stay under the anointing, you stay under worship, you stay under that word, that uh, that soul tie, that emotional bond, it will it'll break. It will break as you stay before the Lord, because it's the anointing that destroys yours. That's so good. Let's Amen. give God a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Y'all being blessed by this. Amen. Amen. A lot of people have, have and, and women and men have, have, have not been able to move on, even sometimes with grief, uh, but more so in a, in a betrayal or something that's so tired, so strong, and you have to, you know, even if it's something that you wanted to work, your heart was in it, you like this person, but they didn't like you. Most times it's so sad for one side. I've experienced it too, where you really like somebody, but they really don't like you, or they like you, and you, you, know, you ain't feeling them. It's, it hurts when it's one-sided. But you gotta walk, you gotta cover your soul, guard your heart, and out of it flows the issues of life. And I'm gonna tell y'all tonight, watch who you let in your heart. That's, that's good right there. That's fantastic. Watch who you let in your heart. And minister, you love people, you, you, you care for people, but watch watch who you let close, close into your heart. Mm -hmm. Let's give God a hand of praise. What am I, number four? So allow God to fill you with his unconditional love and everything, you know. And let me tell you something. God doesn't, when, when we ask God to fill us with his unconditional love, he don't take up, the, he don't just come and pour love into our scalp. He doesn't just come and the preacher come and lay anoint you and fill you with God's love. How do we get filled with God's love? It's by rejection. By things that hurt us. By church hurts. People that hurt you. And then you have to navigate. People that disappointed you. People that are close to you. So you have to navigate. And you have to choose to say, you know what? I'm not going to let this get the best of me. I trusted him. I trusted her. I trusted them. I'm not going to let this get. Lord, I'm filled me with your love. 
Get this stuff out of my heart that's not of love, that's not of your uh, agape. Get it out of my heart. And, and so hurts and disappointments and things that we go through that hurt us, as we go to God with those hurts and we give it to God, that he's able to heal our hearts and to give us that unconditional love. Amen. So it doesn't come because he just said, I'm just going to pull, I'm going to open up your scalpel while you're sleeping and I'm going to pour lab of love on you. No, it comes from trials. It comes from hurts. It comes from pain. People that may, that you may have trusted even in ministry, maybe even with your family, and you say, you know what? Even though you did this, I choose to love you. I choose to walk in God's love. Even if you don't like me or love me, I'm going to love you with the love of the Lord. I may keep my distance, <laughs> but I choose to love you because I don't need anything in my heart blocking my blessing. I don't need anything in my heart, Maria, blocking the anointing upon my life. The anointing upon my life is greater than me holding a grudge. Yes, 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 yes. The anointing of my life is better than me holding something against you. So even though it, it, it may be a little, you might put a little more prayer in. You might put a little more fasting in. You might have to call out Jesus for a little while longer. But in essence, you don't want nothing blocking. Somebody told me. Uh, recently, they said, oh, Pastor Mark, you look good. You look younger. You know, I love them. I was ready to give them a love offer. <laughs> they, said, well, that, they said, because I saw you before. I said, yeah, I was going through something. I said, but I, I gave it to God. And I, and they said, you look younger. She said, I can see the freedom on your face. Because we go through stuff, but you can't carry that stuff. you got to give it to God. Casting all of your cares upon him. Why? Because he cares for you. And let me tell you something, when you keep your heart right and you you do what's right because it's right and you love, God, God's always going to see you through. Amen. 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 Sometimes it's hard. Yeah. Sometimes you may fuss. Sometimes you may cuss. <laughs> you know, I'm just keeping it real. Sometimes you may go through those, those things. Mm. But I'm telling you, when you stick with God, he molds you and makes you and shapes you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. It's the people that rub you like sandpaper. Where you you don't grow you don't grow the most by people who love you. You grow the most by resistance. Say resistance training. Resistance training. training. All right, last one. I'm only give you five. Yeah. Five is good. Number five, which is really passionate. Stay prayerful. Somebody say prayerful. 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 Repenting yes. and asking God to show you you yes. and help you. Don't ask God to show you everybody. Ask say, Lord, show me me. That's and let me tell you something. When you ask God to show you you, you ain't gonna always like what he shows you. No, that's true. You be like, I went to prayer. I was in prayer. And the Lord showed me this about Claire. And he showed me this about Pastor Mark. And he showed me this about Karen Marie. And he showed me this about Kathy. And he showed me this about Pastor Faith. Well, what did the Lord show you about you? Uh-huh. I'm saying Pastor. <laughs> that. Amen. Amen. Allow Stay prayer. We got to, and I know that sounds cliche, but we got to, you got to stay prayer for the, the last 20 years. Yes. Or you got to stay prayer for, you got to stay in prayer. Amen. You got to stay before the Lord. Amen. 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 You have to stay repenting. Lord, forgive me. Lord, wash me. Lord, cleanse me. Lord, purify me. Lord, cleanse my motives. Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. You have to stay repenting. You have to ask God to show you, you show you yourself. And God will show you you by other, sometimes by other people. Mm -hmm. When people have to come to you and correct you and check you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe your kids, maybe yeah. your grandchildren. You know, so God, when, when, yeah. when you want to yeah. be, when you want to be molded and made and shaped, he uses people to, because a lot of times we yeah. can't see ourselves. You're right. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Amen. So a lot of times we can't see ourselves. That's so true. So I invite the people like uh, William around me. They, they correct me and challenge me. I don't say, "Oh, how, how you going? You know, how you going?" You, because you say, "Say I got to keep a teachable spirit." I gotta keep a teachable when you love spirit. God, you keep a teachable spirit, and whoever He uses to teach you and to help you, you grow by it. Right, Matt? Yeah, Matt's back here. Give Matt some love, Amen. Give him a little time, Matt. The Lord give him strength in Jesus' name. And ask God to help you. God is always there to help us. He's our helper. He's our strength. Amen? Mm -hmm. So those, I'm just going to give you those five tonight. Uh, you have my other mic ready? Yes, Pastor Ben, would you take the other mic for me? I'm just going to open it. If nobody has no questions, that's fine. But out of our first five points, if anybody has 
a question I'd like to ask me that pertains to those five points, you can ask me. I'll let y'all ask me. And then if not, we're just going to move on. And we ain't going to take all night to answer these questions either. Any questions? Something that really spoke to you from the first five points, maybe something that challenged you that... Maria? Oh, Maria's scratching okay. Jamala, woo -woo. Hi, Jamala. Take your best hands so we can see you, Jamala. That's my cute sister back there. Come on, Jamala. Who you got with you? Hey, baby. Nice to have you out. What, what point, Jamala? Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Good to have Jamala in the house, my sister. Amen. Give her a hand of praise. Yes. Thank you. She said, stop staying focused on what God's calling her. Yes, she said she's still stuck on that one. 
Yes. So you want me to talk some more about it? Or or you see it. Um, stay in focus, meaning whatever you feel that you're called to do. Do you feel like you know what you're called to do? No, no, no. Okay. So you have a lot of love, you, you give care. See, everything is not so much, not a, you, you may, like I said, you may be someone who speaks in front of me like I do, but you show, I know you, so you show a lot of love. You're a caregiver. You take care of people. That's a ministry. That's a big ministry. That's, that's hands-on ministry, ministry of elves, making sure your mom is taken care of, making sure your dad's taken care of, taking care of people in the field of the line of work that you take care of. So that is bringing people uh, the love of God through your life and through what you do that are homebound. It's called bringing Jesus to them, bringing your light to them. The Bible says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glory, Father, Father, which is heaven. We don't need our lights to shine in the building. Right. We don't need our lights to shine right. in church. We need our lights to shine in the world. So making that difference when you go out, making that difference when you show love, making that difference when you cook a good meal for somebody because she's a good cook. So just making that difference. So using the gifts, talents, and abilities that God has given you wherever you are, and not so much a spiritual way, but a practical way. Everybody say practical. Practical. We, we think because a scripture's not tied to it or because we're not quoting scriptures and praying in the spirit, we think that we're not doing the work of God. But you could be doing the work of God, doing something every day and practical. One of my consumers went home to be with the Lord uh, uh, last week. His name was, I don't want to say his name, just case, whatever. But well, he was one of my, but he did shift him to another home. But just to know that he went home, I felt good in my heart because I knew that when he was with me, I took care of him. I knew that when he was with me, I, I would pray for the clients. I knew that when he was with me, they would watch church on the TV. You know, in the morning I had T.D. Jakes on and Joyce Meyer. And I'd be like, you love Jesus? Yeah, I love Jesus. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I love my clients. So I treat them like that. We would have, we would laugh together. And if you made him mad, he might cuss you out, but they were still my clients. So it's making a difference where you are doing what you do is unto the Lord. And he was full of love, and he would always call me boss. So I would come to work, and he would say, uh, so if he didn't see me in a, a long time, I'd come to him, he said, i walk in, he said, hi, boss. I miss you, boss. I'm like, I miss you too. I said, I'm glad you missed me. I'm glad somebody in this world missed me. He said, I miss you, boss. So, you know, that was, so it, I would just say making a difference showing love, doing acts of kindness in the workplace, because we're not just using church, you use on the job, people look to you on the job, people look to you in your community, people need help. So I, I believe that's your gift. I believe your gift is just showing love, hospitality, taking care of people, because you're, whatever you, you're, you're called to do, or grace to do, say grace to do, right. it doesn't bother you. I've had people tell me, one of my close friends years ago said, Oh, she said, Pastor Mark, I couldn't do that amount of work that you do. I, I just couldn't do it. But I look, I said, look, we all got a special need. I said, we all got a special need. We all got a, a little touch somewhere. So my thing is, I just, I just treat, I didn't treat, I don't, I treat them just like they're my family. I've been there, you know, this year makes 20 years of it. So I treat it like they're my family. I don't treat them different. I don't put gloves on when I'm, at, you know, handling it. They're just like people. So I just show up. One of them just told me last week. He said, I'm glad you're back. He's like, you're my best friend. I said, oh. So you just make a difference. It's not spiritualizing it. It's just loving people and making a difference. Did that make it better? Yes. You got it? I knew Jamal would get it. Give her a hand of praise. That's the thing. I want you to get it. Anybody else have a question or a point or a comment on the five points? Okay. Go ahead, Kathy. Yeah, I'm still, um, when you were talking about forgiveness, um, Forgiveness um, towards my adopted mother, and many times I go through the motions and put it before the Lord and repent, and I, you know how I heard her name the other day? I thought my head was in hot water. Mm -hmm. And then that God letting me know, mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah. and it's still, but I've done this for years and years and years, and it just doesn't go away. And I think there's that component of that. Soul type right. Well. Okay. So. Where you need that? Where you need that final closure and that final release. Yeah. 
And yeah. I think I do it. I think I do it. And then. Okay. And then you met. We, we, we'll talk. And then we'll get our ministry counselor involved too if we need to. But um, you may have. And the enemy just might be fighting you from time to time. So that could be it. But if you feel like it's there. Then you might, we might have to deal with something that you haven't dealt with. Or just do like a final. Where you do a final release. And just let it go once and for all. So if it keeps coming up, that means it may still be something there. So maybe just a, maybe nothing major. Maybe that final bit of residue. Maybe you know you know how the house can be clean. Just got a little residue. Yeah, and like I said, it feels like it's gone. And I could go a couple months without you know hearing the steam, and then I hear the noise, and it's like well, I don't yeah. Think, you know, until it was scratching the glass. Right. So yeah, it's still something there. So we'll 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 talk and deal with it. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a praise. Let me pray for you now, Pastor Beth. Just put your hand on her on her shoulder. Father, we thank you for Kathy, Lord. We thank you that she's a woman that's full of your word. Hallelujah. And Father, we pray tonight that even as she goes home, even as, while she's here, or even as she goes home, Lord, whatever that final chapter, whatever that final door that needs to be closed, Lord, show her. She's very intuitive. She's very discerning. She picks up fast. Father, whatever it is, we thank you, Father God, that you will show her what it is. If, if, if it's an incident, whatever caused her to cringe, when she hears that name, Father, and Lord, show her what it is so she can get final closure and final freedom. And we believe you to do it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's give God a praise. Amen. Hallelujah. That's good. Confession is good for the soul. Yes, Amen. That's so good. Pastor Faith, you have Diana? Change your mind? Okay. Anybody else? Question, thought, or comment? Sabrina? Yes. Oh, Cassandra, go ahead. Hold that point. I believe, hold that, don't lose your thought. I believe the stronger the tie or the stronger the relationship, the harder it is to come out of it. If you really, really love from your soul and you really, really love with all the that's within you and you put a lot of love and confidence in that person, it makes it harder. And I'm going to tell you this, it's even harder for those, no judgment if you have or haven't, if you had uh, sex with them. Those are very hard to break. Soul ties are hard to break anyway, but when you become intimate with a person, it's even harder. But it is doable. It's, it, is un, it is unbreakable through the power of the Holy Spirit and the anointing because it's the anointing that doesn't break yokes. It's the anointing that destroys yokes. And you have to be honest with people if you're in counsel or people are praying. you got to be honest with them so people know how to pray and can help you come out of it. But uh, it can be done. It's, it is, it's very hard because you become one. Okay, go ahead.
but you know, I have moved on. And another thing is, um, do you, before you move on, you feel like you're you feel like you're good now. Yeah, I feel like I'm good now. Okay, good. That's yeah, good. Okay, good. It's still a little bit perfect, okay. but it's not as like I would try. No, I got you. You know, oh, yeah. and stuff, and it was it was easy for me for a while. Yes. But you know, I don't try. You've grown through. I learned through. To That's the thing. Yeah. But And that's what you, and the good thing about it is that what that's what you sold. So when people left, you you still love them and you didn't have that. Yeah, I still have love so when you left, it probably you sold that. So that's what you're reaping that. Yeah. That uh, yeah. same thing. That's good. But I, I but that was really good and to uh, allow God's love to fill you mm-hmm. is really what's inside of you. Yes. You have to have the love to give out the love. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Very good. Give Cassandra a hand. One of your cousins, I don't know if we're talking about the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> I go to her myself and be asking this. She has a cousin, and she's, if you don't want to know the truth, don't ask her. She's not going to sugarcoat. She's not going to tell you what. And if I'm going through, I'll be like, what do you think about so and so and so and so? And she'll tell me, and I, I like that because she's straightforward. And everybody's not like that. I do have a core of people that will tell me like that, but this girl, she and she's very discerning. She's, I ain't going to take this lot. I just want you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And the multiple counts there is safety. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Amen. Give God a hand of praise. Yeah. Anybody else? Well, I'm going to pray. Oh. oh, come on, Mr. Well, I'm going to pray our faithful live people out. First Lady, while we put it with a uh, funeral that I had attended, and huh. they saw me. And you know, um, when I most of the time, because I always pray, and that's always my prayer. Like if anybody gets me, I, I, when I see them, I don't want to feel that, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna confess the one thing um, I had. I'm going through a divorce, and so when I, they, we did a FaceTime, and my husband was on the screen. I could see my husband. And so they were, you know, just talking, and all of a sudden, uh, my husband said something, but I just went off. I, I, I did. I just went off, like in anger. I'm just angry. Mm-hmm. And the judge said, "Oh, you still have some anger." <laughs> wow. And then I was like, "Oh God, that's just not what I wanted to do." But right. you know, but I said, "Lord, I, I still have another. I still got another hearing to go, so I'm going to God, please, <laughs> guide me, please, God, because you know, my husband was saying things, and I knew it was." wasn't true, mm-hmm. and but it, and it seemed like the judge was listening more to my husband than listening to me, so, oh. you know, but I know that's the enemy, and I just have to keep praying over that, mm-hmm. but back to when my, uh, my former pastor and uh, some of the members were there, 
they didn't know I was going to be there. So, um, of course, this place was completely on the cap. And so I had seats where I was, so I was like way in front. And then, you know, they had the mask on. But, you know, when they saw that, you know, I was like a deer in headlights. They kind of froze in the floor and just like kind of stopped. And so then the lady next to me, I said, do you see what this is doing? He's backing it down. She said, oh, no, no, that's what it's going back there. So she said, oh, let me just get you a little bit just behind me. And, I, and the sad thing was that my former pastor sat during that whole service just about with his head down. He didn't really clap when people were doing things. He just kept his head down. And after the service was over, I did hug him and greet him, but his wife wanted to apologize. Mm -hmm. She was trying to say something to me, and I, I just cut her off. I said, listen, we're always going to be family. No matter where we are, we'll still be family. I still love you all. You know, I'm, I'm not holding anything that I want to say so bad, but you know I was dying on that to you. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't say that to wow. her, but I just said, I still love you all. And so I told uh, you know, some other people that, you know, we could get a congregation. But I thank God for you because um, as the gentleman back over there was saying, that all of those, uh, you know, one through five is everything. And some of the things you were saying, it was almost like you were there, you know, in my life. But I just thank God that, you know, that you are teaching us and trying to uh, help us to excel in, in the things of God. Because we can't, how can we be a witness and be a help to someone else if we have issues ourselves? So I just thank God for you that you're, you're helping. Good. That's good. God be the Let's give God a hand of praise. I'm going to close out our Facebook Live family, and I'm going to release a prayer for all of us. And me sharing my uh, 20 years of ministry is just uh, sharing my life and sharing experiences. And we all have experiences because we've been here for however long we've been here. We are he we're still here. And my goal is just to get you to to uh, just allow God to use you and to use the things that you've been through, the good things, the bad things, the good things. Use those things for God's glory. Amen? Amen. So, Father, we thank you, Lord. Bless for everyone that's here tonight, Lord, we thank you for your word that's gone forth. And, Father, I pray, Lord, that the, if, if that word touched you tonight, whether you're watching or in here, and there's some things you want to deal with in your heart, just put your right hand on your heart. And Father, right now, I just thank you for your sons and daughters. Thank you, Lord. And I thank you, Father God, that whatever they sense, those that may still have soul ties to a man or to a woman, Father God, and they just might need that last snippet, Father God. They might need that last bit of freedom, Lord, in Jesus' name. I pray tonight, Father God, that you show them, Father God, the person and show them the freedom tonight, Father God. I release freedom in their hearts, Father God. I, I sever every ungodly soul tie tonight in Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you that you heal the brokenhearted and that you bind up their wounds, Father God. And I pray that even as they leave this place, Father God, that you reveal to them if it's a person, if it's a group of people, whatever it is, that you would show them and that they would just give it to you, that they will repent and give it to you tonight, Lord, in Jesus' name. And we know that there's nothing too hard for you, that with you, Lord, all things are possible. So, Father, we bless you tonight, and I just speak deliverance and freedom over your sons and daughters, Lord. And, Father God, whatever convicted them through the word of God tonight, we thank you, Lord, that you show them so that they can change. You show them that they, so that they can be whole tonight, spirit, soul, body, mind, will, and emotions, Father God. And we thank you for your word that brings freedom. We thank you for everyone that's watching tonight, Father God. And we ask that you bless them and keep them until we meet again. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give God a hand of praise. Amen. 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 Am